Greetings, traders and investors. Bennett Tyndall from TradingAnalysis.com. It's Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. And I would like to welcome you all to the Trading Analysis YouTube channel. We do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to tune in. Let's jump on into it. We met over the weekend taking a look at the price action in the indexes, specifically the NASDAQ, the S&P, Russell 2000 small caps. We even looked a little bit at S&P mid caps. I wanted to take the opportunity this evening to just update you on the short-term outlook. If you do follow our work, you'll know that we've been bullish and looking towards a 15,500 cluster in the NASDAQ 100. That's an area of resistance that we feel could still potentially set us up for a larger corrective pullback. Said otherwise, a corrective pullback that would be greater than any counter trend move that we have seen since the COVID low back in March of 20. This still remains a possibility. Given that it's a wave two position, it can take us to a variety of retracement depths. And for that reason, you're better served sticking with the dominant trend until you're presented with a very good reason to go against this market. Again, if you do follow our work, tomorrow morning, 8.45 Eastern on Todd Gordon's YouTube channel, we have our TA Live Wednesday live stream show. On August 18th, we identified a zone of support in the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000 that we anticipated giving us the basis uh, for a reversal towards this 15,500 cluster, and we're, we're there. So please join us tomorrow morning. That show is likely going to be moved over to the Trading Analysis YouTube channel at some point in the near future. We also have Crypto Lab on Thursday with Alex. Okay, so we've been tracking this cluster looking for a larger possible wave to correction. Now, I think we are probably one of maybe a couple, if that, I, I really can't find many other Elioticians within the industry that are considering a more bullish interpretation of price action. A more bullish interpretation of price action that suggests we could be on our way towards 16,000, 17,000, even 20,000 in the NASDAQ 100 over the next couple of years. This is an interpretation which we continue to track with our clients and will not hesitate to act on in the event we see the signs we need to substantiate it. For the time being, I'm continuing to track price action as still contained within a same degree of trend from your COVID low. All right, so let's get off of the daily chart and let's talk about recent short-term trading action as that's what this uh, video is specifically about. We're even going to take a look at what's at work in Bitcoin. Alex will be back with you on Thursday for Crypto Lab and we'll see if we can get him out as well uh, for an evening update getting you off of the daily chart. And I like to drop these circles on for context so you understand the price action that we're looking at when I take you to the smaller time frame. From your daily to the one hour chart, you can see price action identified in yellow. So from daily to the one hour, we'll go from the one hour to the 15 minute chart. Zooming in on price action here on the 15 minute chart, I wanna take note of what's unfolded since the August 18th low. So what ended up happening is on August 18th, and in fact, let me take you back to July 26th. July 26th, we started a counter trend corrective pullback in the NASDAQ 100. From July 27th through the August 5th high, that was the most clear counter trend corrective structure that I think I've ever seen on a 15 minute chart. It was a straightforward, precise measured move structure. We had anticipated this as fading lower and taking us into a viable zone of support. This three wave structure, we did not anticipate concluding a bull market trend. Three waves does not a trend make or a trend conclude. Or I should say three waves does not a, does not a trend make or break in this instance. So from there, we printed this expanding ending diagonal with a zone of support identified here between 14,808 and 14,828. That's where we anticipated the reversal. We noted this for you on the Wednesday, August 18th uh, live stream event. The actual low, as we looked at, 
over the weekend was right there at 14,773. So now here on the 15 minute chart, from there, we've rallied impulsively right into our 15.5 to 1517 cluster resistance. Additionally, the trend line that we noted over here on the daily, which was sourced from September 3rd, established on January 22nd, rejected on February 14th, then rejected again in July multiple times. You'll see as I take you off the daily back to the 15 minute chart, that trend line is exactly where the and NASDAQ 100 met resistance July 13th, also on July 23rd. Heck, that's where we ran into resistance here. With our clients, we had anticipated, let's see here if I can squinch this up. From the 24th, we do a three-wave pullback. Wave four demonstrates equality to its wave two counterpart. Here we have a trend line sourced, trend line established. We noted the confluence of our FIB clustering taking us right into that green trend line. That's where we anticipated with our clients to rally up to 15.5. So here we are from the 15.5 cluster, which you can see the significance of it based on the September 1st rejection. We've only been sideways, which tells me that the idea that this is the wave five of one completion into trend line resistance may be unlikely. A break above this cluster would open up a more bullish interpretation such as the one that I identified here for you earlier in the video. But this is what we're looking for down back on the 15 minute chart. So from the 15 minute chart over here, I'm gonna take you over to a different decomposition, just a little bit more uh, of a clean breakdown. From September 1st, we see three down likely just some sort of a three wave move back. We fade lower in C of wave two. And once this counter trend corrective structure completes, that's when we're going to be looking to get risk on again in the indexes looking for continuation. Now, given that we have this trend line resistance in 15.5 cluster, if we're met with some sort of a catalyst to substantiate a larger 10% style market correction, then we could still entertain this. But if we simply correct lower in C of wave two here, find support and start to rally, my goodness, it could be a very bullish finish to Q3. That's the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at what's happening in the S&P 500. In the S&P 500, price action from your March 2020 COVID low has numerous valid possible interpretations. For that reason, I continue to view the NASDAQ as your best forward leading indicator of collective market sentiment. In the S&P, however, here from the 26th of July, we correct into August 3rd. On our Wednesday the 18th live show, we noted the fact that we corrected lower here in a measured move and said, okay, maybe, maybe this is the start of a wave one and this is some sort of wave two. What ended up happening is the S&P violated the 43.73 low into the open on the 19th. That wasn't of concern. Why? Well, numerous valid possible interpretations and the more dominant sector or index rather, the more dominant index right now, the NASDAQ 100 in our opinion was suggesting that that was a buyable low. So from that low, the August 18th low in the S&P 500, very similar to the NASDAQ 100, we do view this as a completed five wave trend. The five wave trend notice is giving us sideways consolidation, very similar to what we saw back at the end of July. So zooming in on price action here, we have five waves up, three down, three back to the 1272 external retracement of the A wave decline. And now we are in some sort of a C of wave two correction. That's the S&P 500. Taking a look at the Russell 2000, looking at the Russell 2000, this particular index has been sideways in consolidation since February of this year. A good six plus months of sideways consolidation, we identified 
as likely coming to completion back on July 19th. From the daily chart down to the one hour chart, you'll notice here from the July 19th low, we print a leading contracting variety diagonal that is met with a sharp directional three wave retracement. It took us into a 78.6% retracement of the July 19th through August 5th rally. And now we've seen a sizable breakout from there. Now, I don't care for this 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two action. It's possible, but I think more likely from your August 19th low that this is five waves up. So to adapt that over here in our red count, essentially that would look as follows. With this now being five up, this allows for the Russell 2000 to counter trend correct, very similar to the S&P and the NASDAQ and then align for upside continuation. One of the other dynamics that I discussed over the weekend was the developments at work in TLT and TNX, TNX being 10-year yields and TLT being 20-year bonds. Now taking a look at the break-evens, the break-evens did close higher on Friday, just ever so slightly, up from 2.32 on Thursday to a 2.36 close on Friday. But looking at the actual chart of 10-year yields, I continue to view this as a counter trend move from the July 21st low. Wave count invalidation on this particular interpretation would be a move over 1.47%. But if we can reject this resistance zone and fade lower, thus giving us a five wave impulsive decline from your March 2021 high in the 10 year yield, we'll then have a directional trend establishing structure. Over to TLT, 20 year bonds, which has an inverse uh, interpretation, obviously. You can see here we have one, two, three waves into the July 20th high from your March 18th low, which means we only have evidence to suggest its counter trend. If this corrective pullback that we've seen since your July 20th high yields a new high in TLT, then we'll have five waves up. We are pushing back towards support, and I noted upside invalidation at 145.43. The true invalidation level doesn't set in until 140.51 because this could still technically be part of green minor degree wave number four. Okay, so that concludes the S&P as well as the NASDAQ and bonds and yields. Please be sure to join us tomorrow morning on the TA Live Wednesday live stream show for more information. And of course, if you are interested in following us on a regular basis, you can check us out at tradinganalysis.com. I do post nightly strategy market updates for our clients anywhere from half an hour to an hour in length with timestamps. Now, I promised you all a quick discussion on Bitcoin when we started the video, so let's get to it. Starting it off with our daily chart of Bitcoin, top left-hand corner of your screen is the December 2017 high, which yielded a sizable counter-trend corrective pullback. Wave 4 was just over equal in time to wave 2, and wave 4 was right into a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement of the wave 3 rally. That wave 4 low our uh, lead crypto analyst, uh, an our lead crypto analyst, Alex. I was thinking analyst and Alex in the same same thought there. Uh, he's a former institutional trader, very well versed in the world of of uh, crypto as well as all things macro related. He called this low. We identified this low to within a two week window. In fact, just as everybody was complaining that oh we're going to hold 5k because that's the current mining costs, well it. It didn't happen. From that low, five waves up into July 26th of 19, yielded a sharp retracement into a 786, um, concluding in March of 2020. From there, we rally higher in five waves. We met the 1618 price objective pretty much right into the 1618 time objective. Doesn't get any more clear than that. It's frankly quite remarkable how well the world of crypto follows, uh, follows Elliott Wave and Fibonacci, but at the same time, it's not all that surprising given the fact it trades 24 hours a day and Elliott Wave 
is a way and a means of establishing collective market sentiment. So from the highs here back towards 65K, which by the way, Alex was suggesting 65 to 75 would stop price action and yield a sizable pullback pretty much right when the financial media was calling for the move to 100K, we got a sizable 50% corrective pullback from there. I'm continuing to view this move from the low, so from your June 22nd low, I'm continuing to view this as some sort of a counter trend B wave retracement. I noted on August 23rd back here, right here, on August 23rd that I was moving from Bitcoin to cash. I continue to remain out of Bitcoin exposure as I do expect at least a move to revisit this support cluster. You'll notice where we found support here in Bitcoin was right into the January 27th low, okay? So the idea that this is A, B, we get C, D, and E of a triangle and then go, that's not out of the question. But the major takeaway there is still that this is a counter trend B wave and we have further downside to go. My preferred view of Bitcoin suggests that the five wave structure gave way to a sharp three wave retracement right into a 786. Notice the actual high of this candle being 52.919 versus 54.520. That being a B wave of a zigzag and now looking towards 18.5 to 22.2, either concluding at the end of this year or as late as June of next year. Why are those levels of significance and, and of importance? Fairly simple. The world of Elliott Wave offers us a few key guidelines. One of the guidelines includes an Elliott Wave channeling technique, which we utilize in two different ways. One of the ways we utilize this channeling technique is when we're confident that we have waves one, two, and three anchored and are appropriately confirmed anchored, we take a trend line from wave one and you draw that over the top of wave three. You then project a parallel trend line and drop that into the low of your wave two position. What I find so very fascinating about this trend line and allow me to increase its visibility so you can get a better view of this what I find so very fascinating about this trend line in Bitcoin is if we were to take the concept of wave four and wave two being equal, that is corrections of the same degree demonstrating equality, either in duration or magnitude or heck, sometimes even both. If we were to take four V2 equality in price, which is at 18,507.21, said otherwise, where this correction would be equal in terms of percent retracement to this correction, that level comes in at 18,507.21. If we then do a time comparison of wave four compared to the wave two counterpart, watch what happens if I were to just theoretically move my anchoring here to 4v2 price and time equality. Where are we? We are at our one, three, two Elliott wave trend channel which we utilize to help substantiate and confirm fourth wave FIB support. Now, remember the guideline of equality here that I just talked about? Let's take you back to the December 2017 through December of 2018 market correction. It's 4v2 time equality came in November 1st of 18, the actual low being the end of December or mid-December. Extremely close. Now let's look at those same two 4v3 and 4v2 Fibonacci targets in orange four. 4v2 was at 44.30. That demonstrated equality to wave two of the same degree. So this orange wave four was about equal in time and a little bit greater in price. But look at the 38%. The 38% was at 3101.60. Do you all know what the actual Bitcoin low was in December of 18? It was like 3128. It depends on the exchange you looked at, but it was like 3128 on Coinbase. So taking that same similar concept, that gives us 4v2 equality at 18507 and the 4v338% at 22,254, which means I expect Bitcoin to find support between 185 and 22.2 at the end of this year 
or as late as June of next year. What's so very fascinating about this cluster of Fibonacci support that I just identified is the fact that it would backtest your December 2017 19,587.70 high. That's where I expect Bitcoin to go risk on again. And just when it's convinced the world that Bitcoin is done, it will come roaring back towards 100K. Kind of similar to what we were looking at here. I put a post out, I remember, uh, to some friends and followers and kind of calling for that same move. And I think the Bitcoin market, crypto market, is going to do that to you all again. Now, if I didn't provide you an alternate, I wouldn't be an Elliotician worth my salt. So um, the alternate is that this is A, this is B, we get C, we get D and E, which means we maintain our June 23rd area low. Here is that alternate illustrated for you. And what, what I would do here is I would just look at this as A, B with a diagonal contracting in C. Then that gives us a spot on measured move retracement right into the 786. We get C, we get D, we get E. We conclude into our shallow fib support here in blue, and then it's time to go. So I think the major takeaway here would be the fact that whether this is B of a triangle or this is B of a zigzag, such as my preferred interpretation suggests, I view this as a high probability B wave retracement greater than 60%. Okay, that's it. Please be sure to tune in with us tomorrow morning. We'll have Alex in to discuss more on the world of crypto. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the content. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe with notifications, and I will see you all on the next public video update. If I don't see you then, I'll see you in the YouTube live stream tomorrow, and Alex will see you on Crypto Lab Thursday. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.